So first of all, I want to thank uh, all three of you who are organizing this one. And uh, it has been a pleasure. And of course, uh, I should not forget to thank the uh, SPICE team, especially Elena. She keeps, keeps coming after me for the abstract. So I have to make sure next time I do keep on time. So thank you very much. So let's say uh, we're going to talk about uh, our path, our journey towards uh, Mayarana Pair uh, in, in a gold surface. That's what we're going to talk about. So as you can see in schematic there, uh, this is what uh, kind of structure we're using to look for the Mayarana. So I'm Jagdish Mudera from physics department here. And I also have a relation with Francis Beta Magnet Lab and Plasma Science and Fusion Center. So my close colleagues are Peng Wei, who actually started out with me in the beginning of this program. And soon after, later on, of course, uh, Sujit Manna came along for the STM work. And then we have a theory support in particular from Patrick Lee and uh, Ying Ming Zhi and uh, Cam Law from uh, Hong Kong and so on and so forth. So the work we are, we are going to present to is uh, funded by several agencies, in particular, John Templeton Foundation, which is what made it possible because uh, they, they supported this uh, very risky program. And that's what they're, they're supposed to do, to look for something very exotic to answer the big question. So ONR is another supporting agency and National Science Foundation uh, also supported this program. Okay, so what do you do? In order to go to find the, find the Maya or now you have to find gold first. Fortunately, you don't have to buy so much gold. You just need a few grams of gold. And then you have to listen to some of the outstanding theories and at the same time, happy theories. So given that one, we had a very close uh, interaction with uh, Patrick Lee and his uh, grad student at the time, Henry Potter. They're the ones actually instigated us or uh, inspired us to go after this thing. So they had a theory paper way back in 2010, 2012 time period. And they came to us and see if we can experimentally show this is what is possible. So then of course, uh, it, was, it was so exotic and so challenging. In the beginning, it was uh, not so easy for us to accept the program. It involved too much effort, too many resources and time. Everything was there and uh, it was not very sure we we're going to get the Mayarana there. So first thing was to, they, we, was, we were supposed to drive the gold into superconducting state. That's the first thing. So not just that, then we have to actually create a superconducting surface state. What's so special about this one? As you can see here on the top, and my screen is covered with something. Anyway, uh, on the top, you can see this band structure of the gold, a schematic of that. What we have is a bulk state and a surface state. As you see, surface state is isolated from the bulk state. This is what is uh, very different about this. And this surface state has a very large uh, rush power splitting. This is what instigated them to go after this uh, system for looking for a Majorana pair, theoretically. So, Anyway, so another thing about this is uh, this uh, surface state is almost like a two-dimensional system because isolated from the bulk state. And of course, other side you have a vacuum or a, so that's another potential there. So it, look, it looks like a quantum well state. Now, what they said was, uh, okay, they can be superconducted in this system by several uh, like a virtual scattering process, as you can see in the schematic at the, at the, as shown here. So what they said, that, uh, I mean, and reporter and practically, if you have this isolated band, still you can have uh, scattering across the two bands, or you can have some uh, interaction with the uh, phonons or, or photons or uh, any, any other excitations like the Coulomb interaction. So that can give rise to a coupling of the cis, coupling of the uh, bulk and the surface. So that can give rise to uh, superconductivity. So this is what we are supposed to look for first. So we set out a program. In order to do that, we had, of course, to get some outstanding people to work on. Constantly throughout the whole program, Patrick Lee has been the biggest driving force for us to get this uh, working. And a, a very close interaction with him made a big, big difference in the whole program. It made it possible. So Peng Wei, as I mentioned, he was my postdoc way back in 2000, starting from 2011, 2012 period. We just started the program. He put in a lot of foundation stone for this particular uh, challenging uh, project. And then uh, Sujit Manna joined in 2016 or 17 or something and started working on 
scanning tunnel microscope, which was useful, very, very valuable to look for this Majorana. And after we got the results, the modeling was done along with Patrick Lee by Cam Law and this uh, student, uh, Ying Ning Zhi, and so on. So the work we have done in regard to this particular pro program is published in these two articles, as you can see here. So it has appeared also in a lot of websites and we have a patent pending on this one. Okay, so we all know this, I mean, this is not something very new now, started with the Majorana himself, he predicted for a particle, in particle physics, a exotic particle, which is named after him now, which is its own antiparticle, it's called Majorana fermions. In the case of solid state, Kita actually came up with this scheme that in a, under certain conditions, a fermion in a superconductor can actually separate in space, as you can see here, into two, two parts, and which is called the Majorana zero modes. And these are, uh, uh, these are actually, each of them is uh, an antiparticle of itself. It's a single fermion splits into two states, two parts. So if you see that in order to find the Majorana pair, you have to always have two, two appearing in a particular chain like, such as this. They don't come single. So this is one of the things we had to show. And what we needed was uh, superconductivity and high spin orbit coupling. And of course, we need to have magnetism to drive the system into topological superconducting state. So that's what we did. Uh, before that, let me say that uh, a lot of work has been done in this area for the Majorana zero modes. And in particular, the concentration has been in the semiconductor nanowire, as you can see here. One of the earliest one is by the DELS group. And uh, you can see that they work with the indium arsenide, I mean, indium antimonide nanowire, so the high spin off, which is also high G factor. So they were able to drive the system into superconducting state and then look for the zero mode. At the same time, also later on, maybe just a little bit later, indium arsenide nanowire was used by the by Charlie Marcus group. And there again, they're, they're able to see the signature of the Majorana. In the case of SVM, the two groups uh, have done extensive work. One is uh, from Princeton group, which is Ali Azani's group. They, they put in uh, ion atoms on the on the lead surface. They are able to or bismuth surface. They are able to see the myo, this n mode, n mode zero mode of the Majorana, and uh, also the group from Hamburg, Roland Wiesentanger's group. So they also have the system which is similar to this, the adding atoms to look for the Majorana. And in parallel also, there's a program going on with the topological insulator in combination with the superconductor, especially in Shanghai's group. And what they have seen is in the core of this flux, we can see the Majorana formation. So you can see, you know, all these cases, so these are all quite complicated systems. And uh, what we want to do, look for is for a simple system, which is scalable at the same time, it's uh, robust and stable. This is what we want to look for. And we have the perfect system, which is gold. Called the, one of the stablest things you can imagine. So this also has a very large spin orbit coupling. And in fact, the spin orbit coupling in, in the gold surface state is almost a thousand times or even more than a thousand times bigger than what is possible with uh, uh, semiconductor nanowires uh, shown here. Thus, we have a system which is robust and at the same time is also not prone to so much of disorder and all that. It's not affected so much and can also have a very stable signature of the Majorana. Uh, now the question is, we have to look for it, right, Majorana. So the story, of course, the Majorana continues. And in fact, uh, we have actually a program which, is, uh, which actually can take to the next level as you see, go, as you go along, we'll show you. So the outline of the talk is uh, just to show you briefly what the theory proposed and what are the experimental challenges we have to overcome in order to look for this. And which means we have to grow the epitaxial one, one, one goal. That is what is needed to look for this effect. And it has to be grown on a superconducting, uh, another metal, which is uh, of course, uh, so it should be matched. An important thing is uh, the surface state of gold should not be affected by it being present on another metal. And then of course, induce superconductivity in this goal one, one, one. And then one of the biggest challenges you'll see is the uh, Fermi level location. In the gold 111, the Fermi level is almost 0.5 electron volt above the bottom of the band. So, which means so it is we have too many bands we're going to deal with, sub bands when you apply, when you make a narrow wire. And that means you have 
is a you dilute the effect of this uh, signature so tremendously that it is hardly difficult to see that. So we had to work with a uh, formula which is not at that point it has to be lifted down. I mean, bring brought down. So uh, the theory of, by Patrick Lee and uh, Andrew Potter was that the Shockley surface state uh, 111 gold has the ideal system is the ideal system with a large uh, spin orbit coupling energy. So it should be able to display the wire on a pair. And their papers are, you can see here, quoted, quoted here. And these two theory paper is what we based our work on. So the theoretical schematic was that uh, if you have a gold nano wire, as shown here, one should be able to see the Majorana forming at the two ends of the, the gold wire. This is a conventional superconductor. So this can drive the gold into superconducting state and surface state also if it becomes superconducting, then you should be able to see this. Now, as I mentioned to you, the Fermi level of the gold is very far at the bottom of the, of the surface band. So we need to actually lift this band up all the way so that uh, we don't have to deal with so many modes. We just have few modes to deal with. And then our probability of seeing the Majorana is much higher. So the, another thing was about the theory, even multi-mode is okay. This is different from on the semiconductor nanowire where they deal with single mode. You have multi-mode still be able to see few modes. And uh, one of the, as I've mentioned the Fermi level as it was brought down. And of course we need a very large uh, in-plane field, but we have only five Tesla in-plane field, parallel field in our STM setup. So we were able to solve both of these problems using European sulfide. European sulfide is one of the magic materials, which is a magnetic semiconductor. When you when we deposit the European sulfide on this gold surface, we, it turns out that it doesn't affect this, uh, the surface state. At the same time, it actually brought the Fermi level very close to the bottom of the band. So it's as close as within a few tens of milli electron volt instead of 500 milli electron volt. And another very great advantage is that this European sulfide puts out a very large exchange field at the interface. This is exactly what we need. So we need a very large magnetic field to drive the system into topological superconducting state. So this European sulfide magically is able to deliver both these conditions. It made, us, made it all possible. As you can see here, this surface state, as you can, so for the two split band, and then you have this uh, superconductivity developed in surface state, and then you have this magnetic field. So you have to tune the Fermi level into the, into the middle of this thing to see the effect. So again, the program, uh, as I mentioned to you, this is a schematic, theoretical schematic. What they initially thought was you can have a dielectric and put a top gate, and then you're able to tune this Fermi level way down so that we will see that. But uh, we didn't have to go to this level. This particular, degree of freedom, we still have it. So we can still tune the system in the, in the future. Whereas right now we are working with this with the European sulfide, it is able to do the job. So as you can see, the theory predicted that you had to bring the wire size down. In the beginning, of course, with a large wire, which is much bigger than the, I mean, width of the wire, much bigger than the coherence length, you have the wire on all of the place. I mean, it's running around all the place. Whereas if you narrow down, it starts localizing into two ends. So when you have a wire width which is on the order of uh, coherence length, then superconductive coherence length, you can look for this wire on the end, two ends. So as you see, our work is quite well cut out. Initially, we had to come up with the superconductivity, maybe grow the gold, one, one, one. Secondly, we had to bring the superconductivity on the surface state. Thirdly, we had to make the nanowire, and then we had to bring the chemical potential down and so on. So of course we had to have the superconductivity still surviving when you have a fly magnetic field in addition to the exchange field we have. So if we started out to trying to find out the best way to grow this uh, uh, vanadium and gold on top of that so that very thin gold can actually cover the surface very completely. It doesn't form this island. It likes to form island growth on the islands on the surface, but we had to tune the growth conditions so that we were able to see very nicely covered by even two, two nanometers and all that the surface is completely covered. Whereas in our system, what we use is a 20 nanometers of vanadium grown on sapphire. It grows as 110. And then you have this gold, four nanometers gold on grown on that. And this uh, forms nicely 111. You can see all this read pattern and it's covered. It is very flat film. Yeah, as you can see this, this interference fringes in the X-rays scattering. So from which we can see that uh, we have a really nice flat film and it's quite parallel. It's not a patchy or island-like growth. 
Now, we have done some STM study to see the surface condition of this. And what we have is, uh, if you see here, 20 nanometers of vanadium layer, which is very quite flat. These are the atomic steps here, what we have. And then uh, if you look at the atomic resolution, then you can see it forms 110. And then having gold on top of the vanadium, you can see it again, flat surface, which is terraces, atomic terraces. And then once again, the atomic resolution, uh, you can see it's so gold forms 110, 111. So what we have is a very nicely arranged, atomically arranged, clean surface of both vanadium and gold. The coupling of the gold on the vanadium is very clean. This is done in situ in the, in the usual MBE system. And we are able to get a very nice coupling between the gold and the vanadium that which helps uh, to drive the gold into a, a very good superconductor. It almost attains a similar gap structure as that of the vanadium. Now, as I mentioned, another important thing is to look for the surface state. This you can see from the, from the DIDV curve. You can see the surface state in the, in the bulk gold or the surface of the gold as you expected is around 0 0.5, 0 0.55 EV. So this is what, uh, what is seen in the, in, really in the literature. So our thickness of the gold we chose so that uh, it doesn't dilute the superconductivity too much. It, and at the same time, it is thick enough so that uh, the surface state is uh, sort of far away from the, from the vanadium. So it doesn't get influenced. In other words, it uh, stays itself uh, isolated and sharp surface state. So the penetration depth of the surface state on the outer of about three monolayers. So the gold thickness is uh, much bigger than that. So this kind of system actually drives a, a whole surface on whole system into superconducting state. And the surface state actually acquires superconductivity uh, as mentioned by the indirect scattering process. Uh, now the next thing is to induce superconductivity in the surface state of gold. That's what we had to do. So in order to do that, we have a structure as shown here. We created a structure of actual tunnel junction structure. It's a planar junction structure, sandwich. And uh, in, in, on top of the gold, we put in European sulfide, which is our tunnel barrier, and the top electrode is aluminum. So it allows us to do very nice uh, tunneling spectroscopy, superconducting tunneling spectroscopy. So what is plotted is the conductance as a function of the bias of such a structure. And uh, TC of this uh, so-called bulk vanadium gold system is on the order of four Kelvin. It's a little bit high, higher than the four Kelvin. You see here the gap forming by the time you cool down to four Kelvin. And then as you go down in temperature, but by two Kelvin, you see the single coherent peak actually shows a split peak, two peaks appearing below about 2.5 Kelvin. So this split peak we consider as the beginning signature of the surface state showing superconductivity. Now, if you go down to lower temperature, that is below the TC of the aluminum, which is about 1.7 Kelvin. So this is the split peak here. And if you go down below, then you can see a very sharp SIS tunneling feature. You can see it develops into many peaks here, with one, two, three, four peaks on each side. So this can be nicely fitted with the, with the two BCS density of state, one for the surface state, and one for the bulk of the system. So when you do that, you can actually fit them here, as you can see here. These peak positions are well fitted, and of course, magnitude is not quite right because our temperature here is one Kelvin, where these fittings are done for a very low temperature. Now, from this kind of fitting, we can actually derive the gap, energy gap of the superconductor. For example, aluminum superconductor is very well known for the thickness, and also we can get it from this kind of plot, and it's about 0.22 milli electron volt. Whereas, the so-called bulk vanadium gold system has a gap of around 0.61 milli electron gold. Now, at the same time, you can see the gap of the, uh, of the surface state is around 0.38 milli electron. So it is quite quite good, quite robust superconductivity to develop, which is a, uh, it's almost similar level as that of the bulk. So this coupling is very, very, very good between the surface state and the core. This is very important. So we do have a surface state which shows a nice superconductivity, very well defined energy gap in the system. This has been published uh, last year in, in the PR. Now, the, as I mentioned to you earlier, this uh, surface state acquires superconductivity by the inter, interband scattering process, both plastic and inelastic scattering process. So this is again, another very unique unique thing about this particular state. This is not the conventional uh, proximity coupled superconductor. 
So in the case of gold on the vanadium, oh, the, here you have a proximity coupling, this conventional system, whereas the surface state has a very different phenomenon, how it, it becomes it was superconductivity. So we are able to show that the surface state of the gold uh, has a superconductivity developed. Now we can also, since it is a plain sheet of gold, just to show you that it's, this can pattern in any shape and any width and any length and all that. So we are able to find, go down to even 100 nanometers or even below that in the width of the wire. And at the same time, we can have the length anywhere from even up to 10 microns, we are able to get this gold wire. So this can be patterned down very nicely. So this allows us to create circuits the way you want in the, in the future. You want to take it towards a higher level. So that's, it's a very stable and flexible system for, for creating a superconducting qubits circuitry. Now, so far we've shown that uh, uh, we can grow this 111 gold successfully, and it has also shown nice uh, super surface state superconductivity. And the next thing is, of course, how to bring the Fermi level down. And of course, the scalable system, system has been shown already. And uh, finally, of course, we have to look for the fire. Uh, that's for when we use the local probe. So once again, here, this is a, the, the gold on the surface of the vanadium. We can see this surface is flat. This and then of course the atomic resolution. Then you can see also the using the STM, you can see the surface state formation. Now if you cool down to 360 millikelvin, and you can see a nice uh, uh, energy gap of the vanadium superconductivity, which is 0.83 milli electron volt. And uh, in the case of gold, you can see the gold, which is uh, even the patterned gold, is nanowire patterned gold, which has a very nice sharp edges and you can still see the atomic resolution here after patterning and the surface state continues to be around 0.5 electron volt. So the surface superconductor, I mean the total superconductor of the gold itself is shown here. You can see the signature of the superconductor showing up by about 4.5 Kelvin here and then you go down to 0.36 Kelvin you see a nice hard gap opening up on the, on the gold surface. So the gold surface shows superconductivity after even after patterning, it's not affected. Both surface state is there and also you can see superconductivity. So it, uh, it is intact. Next thing is of course, how to bring the chemical potential down um, from the existing 0.5 EV. So in order to do that, as I mentioned to you before, it's like a quantum state. And you have one side uh, confined by the bulk band of the gold, other side is by the vacuum. Then if you can influence the surface uh, potential by say adding a dielectric, then you can actually bring the, bond, bottom, of the bottom of the band up. So this is done by the European sulfide, as I mentioned. So we put the European sulfide, which has a dielectric constant of about, uh, um, point, uh, I mean, about 24. So it helps to modify this uh, surface potential in a, in a great way. And even with the, with the fraction of a monolayer, like 0.5 monolayers, you can see the, the this, this potential is enough to actually lift the band up. And of course, the second thing is, of course, the exchange field provided with European sulfide. Now, as you can see here, this is a uh, with a planar junction. You can see with the, uh, the gold. And you can see this is moved by 24 angstroms gold, I mean, European sulfide on the gold. You see the uh, surface state has moved down uh, all the way to about 0.2, I mean, 30, 20, 30 milli electron volt from the bottom of the band. So this is in the right direction. Whereas on the STM, when you do a fraction of a European sulfide on the surface, then you can see it really moves way down, down to even 200 milli electron, shifts by 200 milli electron volt, even with the 0.8 monolayer of, um, 0.8 monolayers of the European sulfide on the surface. You can see it's a dramatic change. At the same time, if you, Check the spectroscopy of this region, which is just a plain gold, you can see it is still maintaining around 0.5 electron volt. So European sulfide is really showing it, it is doing its job. And second thing is, of course, the exchange field. So European sulfide has the advantage that if you have a aligned magnetic moment of the europium and the adjacent metal, the charge carriers and adjacent metal actually undergoes the exchange interaction at the interface that actually makes the uh, electron uh, cloud, cloud, cloud here very highly magnetic and the exchange field is very large as you can see here. In fact, it can be anywhere from a uh, few tens of Tesla to hundreds of Tesla exchange field can be 
experienced by the metal next to this european sulfide so this is very very great advantage for what we are looking for and the second thing of course so this is entirely a different study this uh, process of european sulfide on the gold can actually polarize the spins in the in the in the gold and also of course in the superconductor so there are a lot of work we have done in the past earliest uh, theoretical prediction of such a phenomena was actually by dijan and sarma way back in the 60s so we have a uh, two advantages of having european sulfide on there one is it brings the chemical potential down at the same time it also provides this huge exchange field at the interface so as you can see here now you have the cold nanowires forming and on that we have the european sulfide very thin layer of european sulfide and so two monoways and then you can see the island formation and the surface state as you can see pure gold is again back 0.5 or something whereas when you have two monolayers it actually shifts it down all the way to about 25 mill electron volt close to the fermi level so this kind of shift is perfect for us because then we have to deal with a small number of uh, subbands instead of hundreds of subbands we have just a few subband maybe 3 to 5 subbands we deal with now what we do is uh, scout around one of these islands european sulfide island look for the spectroscopic you know, information of the superconductivity all around so in zero magnetic field the field is in this direction so in zero magnetic field we find that uh, all the way from 1 to 8 going all the way around you see nice hard gap of the superconductor as expected this uh, this uh, scanning is done very close to the edge of this open uh, supply what we see is it doesn't seem to have any dependence on the where it's located in, uh, in all points here you see nice hard gap of the superconductor now we apply magnetic field very large magnetic field In, in this case, the maximum what is possible in our system, which is the 4.8 Tesla, what we find is uh, the hard gap is maintained in the positions of seven and eight. Get rid of this one. Yeah, in seven and eight, whereas uh, yeah, around in the region between one to three, and also between five and six, somewhere here along the field direction, we see a uh, zero bias peak showing up. Whereas in four five, this away from this point, you can see again see a hard gap. So this kind of feature shows up only around around the field direction, what we call as a north south direction. We consider that is uh, that is showing signs of uh, Majorana uh, bound state forming. So this is with a with a island size on order of like say thirty thirty to forty uh, nanometers. So despite the fact that it is very quite small, we see that we can see the isolated mire on here in these two locations uh this is what is uh, expected in this case of course we have a field present underneath this thing actual mire on form somewhere underneath here and then in case i mean since we cannot actually tunnel at this point with the high resolution we have to do it uh, uh, at the tail of the mire on in other words just a little bit away from that so that to your resolution is improved now we can also see this uh, in a, in a rectangular kind of shaped uh, european sulfide which is actually right in the edge of the gold wire as you can see here once again you scan the tunnel spectra all the way around of the island 1 to 8 you find the hard gap in all cases in zero magnetic field very nicely found now when you apply magnetic field you find that uh, you apply a field of about 4 4.8 tesla and you find that in except for position 1 and 8 everywhere else you still have a hard gap as you can see here 6 7 all the way from 2 to 7 say hard gap whereas in position 1 and 8 which is along the field direction you can see the is zero bias peak showing up so you clearly see that uh the zero bias peak is showing up along the field direction uh, in just uh, two opposite locations in the system everywhere everywhere else you have this uh, hard gap forming and it is of course the atomic resolution of the european sulfide layer is sitting on the top here now in order to show that uh, uh, you can see this onset of the this zero bias peak happens in a similar field in two locations one and eight we can actually scan the system as a function of field in zero field of course you see in both in one position one and the position eight you see nice hard gap as you start increasing the field By about 3.5 tesla you can see this you can see the this gap is filling up and then showing up as a bump in the middle and as you increase to full field you can see the nice formation of this uh, uh, zero bias uh, peak in the system 
So the transition uh, field is between three and four Tesla. Now you can also see it in this uh, two-dimensional plot, where in uh, the it's the magnetic field, increasing magnetic field here, and that gap is plotted here. As you can see, as you keep increasing the field, the gap starts closing and it transitions to the topological superconducting state, and the myron start forming. So this kind of transition is not very sharp, as you can see here. This is expected because uh, you know, the weight of this myron is actually, I mean, zero bias peak is. Uh, is a proportional to the gamma, which is the tunneling rate in the STM, which is not very large. And of course, inversely proportional to the quasi-particle poisoning rate. So this is this kind of thing can happen when you have subcap states appearing in the system in the presence of applied magnetic field. So especially during the transition period, this is when the, there are lots of subgap states. It starts influencing the intensity of the Majorana peak. So when you go away from the is in transition point, then you start seeing opening up the gap even further, then your myron becomes even more well-defined. Unfortunately, we can go only up to about uh, five Tesla. If you go to a higher field, still maintaining super connectivity in the rest of the system, one should be able to see even better dissolved uh, zero bias peak. Now to see how far the myron survives, as I mentioned, if you go in this direction, we don't see the Majorana. Whereas if you go away from this point, away from the edge of the point, you can see in the beginning, very close to the edge of this island, you can see nice peak. As you move away by about few nanometers, you can see the peak going away and you get back to the hard gap. So you clearly see it has a decay length on the order of eight to 10 nanometers. So whether you go in this direction or in this direction, it uh, lasts only about eight to 10. That explains why you are able to see in an island of, on the order of 30 nanometers, uh, uh, the signature of the Majorana peaks. Now we have seen this signature in uh, almost 20 different samples. Whereas uh, we had about, we tested about uh, 60 uh, islands and then uh, this is expected because uh, we have a multi-mode system here. So as you see, this is sort of distributed. It's not so sharp and you have a shape like this. Whereas uh, we saw in the previous case, when you have a rectangle shape with some sort of uh, singularity at the edge, which is uh, a chemical potential, a big drop in chemical potential. So that kind of place uh, seem to like to reside. This is seen by the model calculation by particularly and the colleagues from Hong Kong University. If you have a European sulfide island in the middle of the gold wire, what we have is this kind of Majorana uh, wave function sort of distribute itself along the edge uh, as such as here. So it's not very concentrated. On the other hand, if this is riding along the edge of the gold wire, then you have this big change in the chemical potential here. So at that point, the myron seem to be concentrating as you can see here. So as you go away from that, it drops down very quickly. So this is what we have seen also experimentally. Let's see in the next slide. Now, this is the calculation I just mentioned to you. That's our European sulfur island riding on the edge. Then you see at position one and eight, you see very well defined the zero bias peak. At the same time, if you have an island in the middle, as you seen here, which is not very really sharp, then you can see the peak is not as def well defined as the case of other, other one. And also model calculation shows that uh, there are lots of subgap states, mini gaps, they call it mini gap states appearing. Sure. So that's a myron, uh, split myron, which is uh, hybridized because it's close proximity to each other. Then these are the bands which are actually problematic. Can you have the Majorana forming? And then it can be excited into many of these things. So the whole signature can be decreased. This is in particular case when you have higher temperature. As you see 350 millikelvin, this is done at zero Kelvin. So as you go to higher temperature, then you have this broader zero bias peak. So what I've seen is this kind of cal calculation, which is very, nicely producing what we have seen experimentally. You know, in order to get there, they have to assume an exchange field underneath the European sulfide on the order of two milli electron volt. That was important. So that corresponds to lots of field, tens of Tesla field is actually ha happening underneath the European sulfide. So this is very important to, for us to actually achieve or uh, retrieve the Majorana pair. Okay, so now we have come to the end of it. Just to show you what are the uh, systems we use to get to this point. 
That's our MBE system, which has many sources. We are able to do in situ lot of different layering. And uh, the STM is our standard STM, RHK. In fact, I should be careful. We have experts here in the audience. So our STM is a very simple one, which is RHK in a, uh, with a Chinese cryostat. And it, in fact, we see on the second floor, not much of an isolation, noise isolation. That's one of the biggest uh, challenges we had. So in order to get all the data, of course, you have to stop the feedback more, then uh, you have to work in the middle of the night. So morning, six o'clock, but again, construction started. That was a big problem for us, very big problem, because this is a wet system, so it consumed a lot of helium. So one side, we have the helium boiling away, other side, you have the noise, and in the middle of all that, you had to optimize to get the data. Um, so to summarize, so we are, our work seemed to show that we have a pair of forming at the end of this, uh, especially in the European Southwest Islands. Uh, which helped uh, a lot in trying to locate this on a pair for me. And of course, uh, this is the gold one on the surface state, which is a double metal, which means uh, so we have a nice stable system, which is simplest possible system to create uh, this on a pair and to study its properties. And uh, of course, so the next challenge is, of course, how to create a scalable network and also look for the uh, topological qubit. Now, one last thing I want to point out is a couple of things I want to point out. Uh, this is uh, about the spin sensitivity of the Majorana. What the calculation of, again, Patrick Lee and his group who showed that is uh, if you have a normal metal in contact with the uh, topological superconducting, which has a Majorana pair, then it shows actually a spin selective under reflection. In other words, uh, the reflected uh, hole when the electron is coming from this direction, the reflector hole has the same spin, which is opposite to what normally happens in the ordinary under reflection case, where the reflector hole always has the opposite spin. As a result of that, you should be able to see the so signature of the Majorana just using also in this kind of schematic, in this kind of uh, architecture. For example, this uh, the work done by this uh, Hong Kong group, what they've shown is, uh, no, sorry, this uh, Shanghai group, what they've shown is uh, with an STM, they probe the core of the vertex, they found that uh, it is the conductance is dependent on the on the magnetization direction of the spin polarized tip and uh, this uh, flux, magnetic flux. You can see a change as you see here. In the parallel, we see higher conductance as expected because the reflected electron in this case is uh, the, if the opposite spin, it has uh, in fact it reflects back and we don't, don't have extra conductance. So you can see the difference in the conductance is created by the spin sensitivity of the Majorana. So the, from this kind of chain, they, they calculate about 7% spin polarization. Okay, so the next thing for us is to, we have a new program with the uh, National Science Foundation, it's called the Convergence Accelerator Program. And we found a, a team of people here, as you see, he's a pioneer in this, uh, in this program of the surface state Majorana. And Liang Fu is, in fact, uh, has a wonderful uh, theoretical model for actually creating qubits out of these kind of things, topological superconductor. As a state of the art, we can see what is going on in the Google quantum computer, 53 qubit and the size of the, of the cryostat they use. Whereas that compared to the, uh, the conventional supercomputer, this is a superconductive qubit. And this is a conventional computer where they have 10 to the 14 transistors and uses a lot of power and that's the size. So our goal is to actually create one which is smaller, at the same time more efficient, and also it's much larger and more powerful. So as we know that uh, in the superconductive qubit, for example, the noise, the noise plays a big role. In other words, the coherency of the qubit is very much affected by any kind of noise around. There's a whole lot of possible noise shown here, and each one of them can affect. So coherency itself is a problem in any of the, uh, schemes that have been done so far. So what we want to do is we want to create a system which is more robust. That's what, uh, in other words, uh, in these cases of one does a quantum correction using algorithm. That is what we want to do is be able to see, create a system which is a lot more stable than uh, uh, what is available right now. That is using the topological qubit. That's our goal. That's a scheme by Liang Fu, where you can create this kind of circuitry and then we can actually study the teleportation ac across this uh, island of the, uh, of the system. 
this is European Sulfide, for example, European Sulfide vanadium system. You can actually create this, and then you can actually create qubits, and you can, in fact, have them interact with each other. So that's our goal. Of course, it's a very difficult program, and uh, the the good thing is it is promising. It is uh, is doable, as we saw in our system. We have a uh, platform which is extremely robust and scalable, and can also operate higher temperature. Another good thing about it is uh, since the surface state is sort of isolated from the bulk, it's not so much prone to the disorder and all that. So up to some disorder it can tolerate. So that is a big advantage compared to say semiconductor system. And also the energy scale we are dealing with is much larger in the metallic system compared to the semiconductors. So that's our goal. So with this one, I want to thank you all very much and happy holidays. <laughs>